Welcome to our review of the Thrills and Chills expansion for Sorcerer's Arena from the Op, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy of this expansion. Now, before we go any further, you need to know that the Thrills and Chills box is not a standalone expansion or standalone game or expand alone, whatever you want to call them. In order to use the contents of this box, you do have to have a copy of Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. If you aren't familiar with the base game, I encourage you to take a moment to read our Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances core set review on the blog, watch it on YouTube, or check out episode 201 of our podcast, Underrated, where we talk hidden gem games and review the Epic Alliances core set. Now, speaking of reviews, this expansion is fully compatible with other Disney Sorcerer's Arena expansions. So you may also want to check out our Tourney the Tide expansion from last episode, Again, also on the blog and YouTube. This uh, Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliance's Thrills and Chills was designed by Sean Fletcher, the same designer as the base game and published by the op in late 2022. This small box, box expansion has an MSRP of 1999 US. Now, this small expansion gives you three new character options when playing chapters two to four of Disney Sorcerer's Arena, the board game. You get Mother Gothel from Tangled, Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas, and the Horned King from The Black Cauldron. Now, to go with these characters, you also get rules for character tokens and a new Afraid status effect. For a look at what you get in this box, check out our Thrills and Chills unboxing video on YouTube. Now, inside the box, you'll find a single folded sheet of instructions, three punch boards, and all the stuff for each character, which includes a large character card, 10 card decks, a standee, and a base. Now, the standees are, of course, protected by a thin film, which was just as much of pain to get off the figures in the base game and the first expansion. I hate this film so much, but you only have to do it once. Now, everything here matches the quality and the colors and the depth and tone of the base game which and, and the first expansion, which is important for card games like this, so I have no complaints whatsoever. The instruction sheet presents new rules introduced with this expansion of which there are three, two of which are totally new. Now, the first will be familiar to owners of Turning the Tide or anyone who's picked up later expansions. This is the rules for constant abilities. Constant abilities are featured on some character cards and are effects that are in play as long as the character that has the ability is in the arena. Pretty simple. Next, we have a brand new rules for character tokens. These are round, double-sided discs that can be put into play by characters, abilities, and cards. Once in play, they are treated as additional characters and are affected Affected as characters for all actions, cards, and abilities. Character tokens do not take turns of their own, but are activated by another character. All of their stats, movement, attack, initiative, and victory points are zero, except health points, which are one. When a knocked out character token is removed from the arena, they cannot have, uh, and they cannot have status effects placed on them. This, uh, this expansion includes one type of character token, and that is the Cauldron Born. Uh, they feature no special rules above the standard character token rules. Since this game was released, there has been a change, much like with Turning the Tides expansion. The Cauldron Born related card texts are being updated to reference only the summoning player's character tokens. Then finally, we have the new Afraid status effect. When a character is afraid, they must use each of their movement phases if possible. At the end of each movement phase, the character takes two damage if adjacent to a rival. Next up, let's get to the meat of this expansion, the three new characters. All right, we're going to start with Jack Skellington, as expected for a character from Halloween Town. A ton of Jack's actions make rivals afraid using that new status effect. This new effect is great for use on melee characters and for getting rivals off of victory point square. Now, the other thing Jack gives you is unprecedented control over static effect counters, both those on your own characters and on your rivals. Due to this, he teams really well with characters that give out a lot of effects, either positive or negative. Now, to get the most out of this ability, the key is to upgrade Jack as quick as you can, because you not only get to move tokens, you increase the number as well. Now, on his own, The Horned King isn't much of a threat. He's no tank either. The thing is, he shouldn't be alone for long. This character is all about summoning Cauldron Born. It's getting these into play and manipulating them around the board that is key to using him well. 
What's difficult about this is that you only get Cauldron Born when you earn victory points. Mm -hmm. So this character teams up best with characters that can generate them on their own, as well as characters good for holding VP points on the board. Another trick up the Horn Sleeve Horn King's sleeve is that he has abilities that cause his opponents to banish cards from their discard pile. This is great for preventing the other player from being able to upgrade their cards. Combining this ability with a character that causes opponish, opponents to banish cards from their hands can be devastating. And finally, we have Mother Gothel. Gothel is a control character that can really frustrate an opponent. Her skill gives her opponent a hard choice of banishing cards or giving Gothel stealthy, which could lead to even more cards being banished. He also has abilities to strip status effects, which is great for dealing with annoying effects like invulnerable or taunt. Finally, she has an ability that targets everyone with the princess keyword. While there aren't many characters with that keyword yet, I can see this becoming more powerful the more sets are released. Now, since release, though, the victory point value from Mother Gothel has been reduced by one. She was worth six. It's knocked down to five. Now, that may go back up once there's more princesses in the set. Well, now that you know everything you get with this expansion, it's time to move on to our thoughts. So with this expansion, you not only get three new characters, you get some new rules and a whole new aspect of gameplay. And that's the character tokens or the token characters. To me, this is the most exciting part of this expansion. Now, similar to the ocean tiles introduced in Turning the Tide, character tokens add a whole new dynamic to the battle arena. Their addition changes up the feel of the game and gives players on both sides of the table more to think about. This has been really the most interesting part of the expansions for me. As mm -hmm. while the characters are interesting, having new aspects which can be expanded upon and taken advantage of by other sets really broadens the appeal and replayability of the game. So each time they're introducing this new concept, all the other future expansions mm -hmm. can also add more to this concept. Now, besides that, I personally really dig all the three characters in this set. Of the three, Mother, Go Mother Gothel is the most fun to play. I love the hard choices she offered my opponent and the feeling of hopelessness she can bring as the opponent's hand and deck start to whittle down. This was especially true when combined with the Horn King or with Dr. Fusilier from the base game. As someone who faced that trio, I can certainly agree that there was some real hopelessness being felt. <laughs> It would be interesting to see how the meta is developing in organized play around uh, some of these characters. Now, I will admit that team did not pull it off. Sean managed to come back win with no cards in his hand. So I don't know if it was all that great, but it sure was fun. Now, my next favorite character from this set was Jack, Jack Skellington. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention above that I dig about Jack is that he's a tank. I didn't expect him to be a tank. And he is really good at holding victory point spots on the board because of this. Now, this is due to his high health. He has 10 health, which is one of the highest, and that afraid causing ability so that no one wants to end near him. Now, the thing is, though, this only really works on melee based opponents. When if you're against a team with like Demona and Buzz Lightyear in it, you're going to have to change things up and not just rely on fear because they're just going to back off and shoot you. Now, Jack's other big ability of moving status counters and increasing them when upgraded does seem really powerful, and I love the concept of it, and I keep seeing people whenever I share pictures going, oh, what kind of combo did you get off? I personally have done a ton of damage. I just haven't quite gotten it to work yet well for me. It reminds me of my experience with Davy Jones. Like To me, those are the two more advanced characters in all of the sets so far that take a little bit more planning strategy and comboing. And I haven't quite figured out how to get the most out of Jack yet. It really is all about making that perfect character group. And judging by the continued adjustment of rules as the organized play develops, what that perfect group might be is still under development. Now, my least favorite character in the set leaves you with the Horn King, of course. Now, while I love the concept of character tokens, and I think the way they were implemented is very clear and very well done. They work. It makes sense. I just haven't had a lot of success using them. Now, my main issue is that the character is next to useless without Cauldron Born in play. Most of their 10 cards are all affect Cauldron Born, and if you have no Cauldron Born, they're useless. And they're just not as easy to get into play as I had hoped. Now, I often found that when I finally did get one or two in the arena, my, my opponent just went up with basic attacks to get rid of them before I could pull off anything with them. 
Now, at this point, similar to the Jacks moving around things, I think this is a me problem. I think this is just I need more practice using the Horn King, as well as I need to figure out a good pair to team him up with. Like, in no way did I dislike the character. I just had a hard time using him effectively. Yeah, I didn't get him into play, but I will say that he's a niche character in the mobile game as well. So it's not just in this version. He's a tricky one. Uh, I was actually thinking as we were talking about this, uh, Scar could actually be a solid yeah. one to put him with because Scar mm-hmm. has that ability to yank people off victory points and send it to places and steal it from them. Yeah, I had thought of that combo, but I haven't had a chance to try it yet. We will probably be reviewing Scar next week. <laughs> now, what I'm most looking forward to now, though, is to see what happens next. What, what's going to happen with the character token? I said the same thing about turning the tide. What are they going to do with these ocean tokens? Are you going to give me more terrain types? Now that they have a system to have a summons or allies, or you could, I, I could see sidekicks as Disney, right? Like where, where are the sidekicks going to be in and other supporting characters? I'm looking, really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. Like give me a Peter Pan with a, with a Tinkerbell token that can do something. I don't know. I, I, I can see the potential and it has me excited. Well, unlike uh, the change in turning the tide with separating arena tokens by player, it takes, makes a lot of sense Uh, for this in character tokens. I'm surprised it wasn't part of the original design. Uh, Thankfully, they've got the flexibility of these rapid uh, expansion boxes to uh, make up for any possible oversights in that base game uh, within, you know, we're we're a year and a half now, and there are three expansions out. And to be honest, for all you know, it was all there. They're just parceling it out bit by bit. Publishers are known to do that. Possibly a smart way to do it. They want to keep the game as accessible as possible. And I like this way of adding additional rules myself. It also keeps the price down by not having all yes. these uh, all these components in one box. Yes. Yeah. At this point, I think you're looking at about a hundred bucks if you wanted to get everything at once. If you went all in with everything, if that was the price just for the base game, that's going to turn some people away. Overall, this is a really solid expansion for Disney Sources Arena Epic Alliances. Between this and Turning the Tide, I actually prefer Thrills and Chills. I just had more fun with these characters than I did with the ones in the other box. That said, I am very happy I own both, and I'm looking forward to getting in more plays with leading the charge to see how that compares. That's the third expansion. If you already enjoy Sorcerer's Arena, picking this up seems like a no-brainer. Unless for some reason you have no interest in any of the characters in this box, or if if you only play in family mode, chapter one, this is going to be a safe bet. You're going to get three new characters that all stick out, that all feel quite different from the existing characters, And of course, you don't have to just play them with themselves. You can now combo them with every other player you have. Well, that's it for our review of the Thrills and Chills expansion for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. Another really solid addition to the game. Enjoyed this review? Want to get cool bonus stuff like behind the scenes blog posts, bonus audio, copies of our show notes and more? Check out the Tabletop Bellhop Patreon at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop.